Are you making decisions based on hope or based on fear? Are you making decisions about how you grow your business out of hope for possibility and creation and prosperity, or are you doing it out of fear of failure, fear of uh, being embarrassed, fear of uh, losing? Today, I wanna to talk about the ceiling of complexity. And here's the concept, is that your ability to grow is only ever gonna get to the level of your ability to deal with complexity. If you're trying to attack a problem and it's too complicated for you to get around, then you're not gonna be able to break through that. And it doesn't matter if it's revenue growth or team size or uh, process complexity, like whatever your ceiling of complexity is, that might be the thing that's holding you back from getting to the next level. If you figure out how to do this, then you get to a place where no matter how big the problem is, you'll have a process for understanding how to get through it. Um, recently, I was trying to hang out with one of my good buddies. He owns a bike shop. And I texted him at like six in the morning to coordinate for that afternoon. And he got upset with me because I texted him at six in the morning, which I thought was funny because, you know, like he was mad because the notifications woke him up. I said, well, why don't you have your phone on silence? And he goes, I can't do that because if I do that, I won't get notified of the alarm on my shop because he has this retail shop, which made me ask myself, because you know, one of my philosophies is shine your light. Don't, don't criticize people, just be the example, was why doesn't he have a service or why doesn't he have somebody else or why doesn't he have a process for the alarm if it goes off that... Or he can like take his phone and set it to the VIP setting and the phone contact thing. And it'll only call if you, if you, uh, you know, if it's from a certain phone number, et cetera, et cetera. Essentially what I've been doing this for a really long time. I coach incredibly high performing entrepreneurs and a lot of them get to the point where their ceiling of complexity is the thing that's stopping them from getting through their ability to grow. And that's what I saw in this case. Essentially the problem was 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 debilitating enough that it's never going to allow this person to get free from their business because if you can't figure out how to get your alarm managed by somebody else in case somebody's breaking in, then you're gonna have a hard time figuring out how to hire, compensate, motivate team members, deal with suppliers, and really scale up the operation. So wherever they're at, if they don't learn the stuff I'm gonna teach you today, then they're not gonna be able to get to that to the next level. So. You know, for me, the the word ceiling of complexity came from my buddy, Brad. Brad's a genius dude and an operator. And I owe a lot of the inspiration for my conversations with all of you from Brad. Just an amazing dude, ran, ran a like 150 million a year toy company. Um, but to help all of you, I'm going to link below the uh, playbooks. Uh, essentially, what I have, because I'm going to teach you how to think through the complexity and get through it, is a business playbook, SOP, Standard Operating Procedures. And I'm going to give you 100% my templates that I use with all my companies. Okay, So you can click the link below in the comments. I'll put that there. Um, but the question I have is, how many artificial rules have you created, similar to my buddy, that had a rule that he needs to get the text messages when the alarm goes off, have you created that's stopping you from getting to the next level? Because these are artificial. How many of these things have you introduced to your life that's stopping you from growing? You know, so the, the areas that I think are really important to understand is one is most of your complexity is based on fear, meaning the, 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 the fear of the unknown, the, the fear that if something happened, this other thing might happen. And what's interesting is if you look at the probability of that happening, it's very low. Like, you know, people literally watch the news and get fear-based information and choose to not go, you know, do something. Like, it can be as simple as the weather. You know, like my, my wife is always like, oh, we can't do that thing tomorrow. It's going to rain. I don't know about you, but I have seen the weather change on a day-by-day -day basis. So, so that may not be true. Right. And the way I like to think about this is and I want to ask you, are you making decisions based on hope or based on fear? Are you making decisions about how you grow your business out of hope for possibility and creation and prosperity? Or are you doing it out of fear of failure, fear of uh, being embarrassed, fear of 
uh, losing, right? Maybe you invest in hiring somebody and they don't perform and then you lost all that salary. So, so, it, so essentially the complexity ceiling sometimes is really just a projection of our fear. And if we don't have a way to think through that and logically evaluate it for the potential upside versus the potential downside, like, and we and mitigate it, I'm going to show you how to mitigate it, then that'll be one of the reasons why we don't get to the next level. The other thing that I want to talk about is process mapping. I think it's one of the reasons that I'm so um, successful in business is because I'm able to process, process map. And I got this as a software developer. One of the things about writing code and building software applications uh, is that you need to think about the data store, you need to think about the application logic, and you need to think about the workflow, the, the user flows. And those are kind of the three different core components of writing software. So when I run into business issues, the things that I do to respond to those is to map it out. Because if a problem, you know, and there's this great saying, a problem well stated is half solved, right? I think it was Charles Kettering that, that came up with that, the GM. Um, genius, business genius. So a problem well stated is half solved, meaning that if I can't state the problem, if I can't define the process, if I can't look at it, then it's going to be hard for me to get my head wrapped around it to work on it. And a lot of us, we just keep these problems in our head. We actually don't take them from our mind and stick them out on paper. And I would encourage you to do that. Take what you're, what you're scared about and just write it down and say, okay, what are the steps? If I were to solve this, what would it look like? And there's an incredible book around this. It's one of the three books that Jeff Bezos um, from Amazon asked every one of his senior leadership team members to read. And it's called The Goal by uh, Alaya M. Goldratt, I believe. Yeah, Goldratt. And The Goal is this really great story about a guy that takes over um, kind of a manufacturing fabrication shop. And how he gets mentored around thinking about retooling the shop for productivity and throughput. And it's a great story for people that have this complexity ceiling challenge because it's going to show you how to think through those kind of problems, how to map them out in a process, and then how to be creative about restructuring and redesigning things to be able to unlock them. And I think that's a big idea. And then finally, I want to share with this real quick is, Whatever level you want to get to, the reality of it is, is you need to become the person who can deal with that level of complexity. So people think as I grow and be successful, life gets easier. And what I would say is life doesn't get easier. You got better. The way to think about this visually is think of a timeline between one to 10 of, of things, right? So, you know, a level five problem, if you're a level three person is going to seem hard right? Because it's a level five problem. But if you're a level seven person, somebody that's grown and become the person who can deal with level five problems, the level five problem seems insignificant. If you keep growing and you're a level 10 person and you're dealing with a level five problem, it seems even less significant. Not that the problem isn't as big as it always was. It's just who you are, how you interpret that, how you react, the team you've built around you, the support network, the beliefs you have around those problems is going to allow you to deal with more complexity. So don't wish that things were easier. Wish that you were better. Become the person who can deal. And um, the way I, I like to think about this is, um, oh, I, I learned this from a guy. And he was talking about like um, levels of 10 size problems. So $10 problems, $100 problems, $1,000 problems. Some of you are stuck at $10 problems. The $10 problems will throw you off. You get upset, you scream at people, $10 mistake, $10 waste, $10 decision, right? You need to keep leveling up Roger Hamilton. Roger Hamilton, I believe is his name, yeah. You gotta keep leveling up your ability to deal with, with higher dollar problems. So $1,000, $10,000 problems, $100,000 problems. If you're stuck at the $1,000 problems, you're never gonna increase. And that's another way to think through this levels of complexity, right? And when I coach people, one of the things that I tell them often is I'm not interested per se in your limiting beliefs because a lot of people have that. So what I'm interested is in your, your, your unlimited beliefs, right? Not the limiting beliefs, but what is your beliefs around limitless beliefs? What do you believe is possible for yourself? Because to me, that is a strong enough why 
If you tell me today, if you, if, if you dedicated your life for the next 25 years to become a master at the thing that we're talking about today, your business, what do you think's possible? Limitless thinking, what do you think's possible? That is 100% available to you. And the only reason you don't get that is because you have set these artificial ceilings of complexity that won't allow you to solve the problems you need to solve at those new levels. It's the same reason why somebody that wins the lottery within a three year period is even worse financially than where they were at because they didn't have the knowledge or the, the skill set to deal with that level. And they started making bigger decisions with bigger dollar amounts, which means they end up in a deficit after they've given it all back. It's kind of a crazy idea, but if you literally get distributed all the world's wealth to everybody evenly, 7 billion people, and you waited three years, most of that wealth would be back in the hands of the same people it's in today. Why is that? Because of this. Because you need to develop the skills and you need to be able to be somebody that makes decisions out of hope, not fear. You need to be able to map process to solve really meaningful problems. And you have to become the person internally in your mind and also through your actions that can deal with higher level problems. If you do that, you're going to create an incredible business for yourself. So with that, uh, if you're interested in downloading the playbooks, just click the link below. I'm gonna leave that there. Those are the exact same templates that I use. Every time I start a new company, I start with these templates. They're all there for each core function of the business. And the action I wanna ask you to take is just dump whatever one thing you're doing today that somebody else on your team could do. Take everything you're doing, document the steps even if you don't have to be detailed, like screenshots, click into the software or whatever, and give it to somebody else on your team. I really want you to get a win from today's uh, conversation. I want you to, to document one small step process and give it to somebody else on your team and just start learning how to delegate. Build that muscle. It is a muscle. You do it once, it'll get easier the second, third, and literally at one point in the future, you'll realize that that is the role of a CEO, a founder, a leader, is to learn how to work through their team to build their business. So with that, hope this video finds you incredibly well, and we'll talk soon. Peace. Later, everybody.